What really tore apart the Kobe and Shaq Lakers? How did a team that won three straight championships together fall to the point where after a 2003 second round loss to the Spurs and a 2004 finals loss to the Pistons, after a Kobe and Shaq split, we all agreed on two things. One, this was the greatest guard and big man duo we had ever seen, and two, they should have won more. But they didn't. They couldn't put aside their differences. They could not coexist exist and this feud went deeper than just who wanted the ball more. We've always had that uh, big brother, little brother relationship. Me being a student of the game, I, I realized that every great team has a uh, one-two punch and for this team, Kobe and myself, we are the one-two punch and on any given night, any one of us could take over. You heard that right. Shaq described Kobe and himself as brothers, a word that after their playing time together, they both would use, but also a word that Shaq had been using for a very long time. All the we went through, we could have shook hands and put that aside because people think it was worse than it was. It's just two brothers going at it. If they had acted like close brothers who had each other's backs, they would have finished as the perfect pairing. A guard and center who both, at the very least, were two of the top 20 basketball players to ever live. But instead of acting like close brothers... Why couldn't Shaq and Kobe coexist? personalities just their different personalities i think shaq said i'm the big brother kobe's the little brother kobe wasn't gonna be anybody's little brother he just said you know i'm tired of being a sidekick the narrative was kobe's a sidekick can't win without shaq mm -hmm. right and i didn't hear anybody not phil not shaq come out and say well that's not true. And so looking back almost 20 years later, the question has to be, after winning three championships, what went so wrong that Shaq needed to leave? So what's up guys, Mike here. And as in every story, there is no simple answer here. There are shades of gray. And with that said, there are three specific moments, three specific lies throughout the rise and collapse of the Lakers dynasty that we can use as markers in time to pinpoint exact where this all went wrong. And the first lie is that Kobe Bryant was the one to force Shaq out of the Lakers. The reason why I got traded, it wasn't about me and Kobe beef, it was what they wanted me to take less money. I would have liked to have stayed there the rest of my career. Damn, imagine that. You will see this repeatedly. Both Kobe and Shaq were not the best towards each other throughout their time in LA. So much so that at times the personal attacks get confusing. It is important to note here that the reason behind the Lakers fall was not just that Kobe wanted Shaq gone. That is a lie. Instead, as we just heard, the Lakers chose to ruin their own chance to continue their dynasty by refusing to pay Shaq. But before we continue, guys, I am very excited to thank Factor for sponsoring today's video because if you did not know, Factor makes meeting your nutritional goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. With Factor, you're able to skip the stress of meal prepping over the holidays, as you're able to choose from over 35 plus weekly flavor packed, fresh, never frozen meals that support a healthy lifestyle. They also meet your meal preference and are delivered right to your door and ready to eat in two minutes. Now, personally, my favorite are the Protein Plus meals. If you need an extra boost, they have 30 grams of protein or more per serving. And as you can see, personally, I've been on that chicken grind. I've been on that fitness grind. This chicken was delicious and it only took two minutes to make, which to me with my busy schedule is absolutely key. So with all of that said, right now head to factor75.com or click the link in the description and use promo code Corzemba to get 50% off your first factor box. That is 50% off your first factor box using my promo code Corzemba50. The link is in the description or go to factor75.com. Thank you again to Factor for sponsoring today's video. And for now, let's get back into the video. Miami would win a title with Shaq averaging over 18 points per game in the finals just two seasons later. So why would the Los Angeles Lakers want out of his contract? At his best, Shaq was truly one of the best players to ever play the game. His final stats during the Lakers three-peat from 2000 to 2002 are just straight up ridiculous. However, if we compare prime Shaq, 2000 Shaq, to the Miami Heat title winning Shaq in 2006, we can see the gap is very very big here. We can also see that if we look at Shaq's regular season stats headed up to 2004, they continued to decline. So it is very clear at this point that the Lakers believe Shaq was on the downturn and they simply did not want to pay him max money. The Lakers also felt a lack of loyalty to Shaq after a trade demand in 2001, coupled with Magic Johnson's comments here. It's been a tough situation, but I think 
The writing was on the wall back last summer. This is just didn't happen when him and Dr. Bus could not see eye to eye as far as the extension that Shaquille wanted. Magic was saying the writing was on the wall, as in, this was decided a year in advance. So with Shaq, we had a pattern of demanding trades combined with declining stats and of course, the 2004 finals loss. At the very least, it makes sense that the Lakers thought they were making the right decision. And Lamar Odom, the man they got for Shaq, was a key piece of their 2009 and 2010 championship teams. So due to that ripple effect, who knows if the Lakers should have kept Shaq. Maybe that ends up costing them the championship in 2009 and 2010. We can't tell the future. What we can look at is the past. And at the end of the day, after a three-peat, as Kobe was coming into his prime as Shaq continued to be in his, the Lakers would lose in the second round of the playoffs to the Spurs in 2003. And then after trying to load their roster with aging veteran Hall of Famers in Gary Payton and Carl Malone in 2004, they still lost to the Pistons. Kobe and Shaq were perfectly healthy for these runs. This was true dysfunction at its finest. And the answer as to what happened can be found in line number two, which is that Shaq was not a great team player. Yes, Shaq was lazy. Yes, off the court, you could say Shaq was individually at times selfish. There are stories of Shaq choosing movie deals, choosing movie production schedules ahead of going to practice. And yes, this definitely caused dysfunction. Kobe certainly wanted Shaq to work harder. He was very vocal about it. He felt I should play a certain way and give the ball into him. I said, I'll give the ball into you if you work. You don't work, you don't get the ball. However, out of the two of them, I will say on his side, Kobe Bryant was comparing himself more to a young Michael Jordan, while Shaq, despite the movie deals, made it clear that on the court, at least, he wanted to be a part of a team. When I was uh, looking for cities to, to, to come to, I saw that they played good together. I saw that the guys got along together and I saw that they were a great team. And I just wanted to be part of a team because I know in basketball, you can't do it by yourself, no matter how great you are no matter how great you think you are. They say actions speak louder than words. And I will say Shaq went to the Miami Heat and in 2006 took a second seat to Dwayne Wade, a player who was younger than Kobe and Shaq was completely fine with it. Off to South Beach, what's that experience like with a young D-Wade? So when I got to D-Wade, I was like, I know you heard all the stories. It's your team. So we ain't gonna have any problem. You the man, you the CEO. I'll be the consultant. The reason being that Shaq believed in the Miami Heat culture. Shaq believed that Dwayne Wade was trying to win as a team. He also, when it came to the Lakers, had a very good point. In the three championships the Lakers won. In 2000, Shaq outshot Kobe 157 shots to nine. In 2001, 110 to 106. In 2002, 84 to 70. All three NBA finals, Shaq took more shots and the Lakers won. In 2003 and 2004, in the series, they were eliminated. Shaq took 102 shots to Kobe's 159 shots against the Spurs, and then against the Pistons in the finals, Shaq took 84 shots to Kobe's 113. This, with Kobe's field goal percentage, dramatically lower than Shaq's. Shaq truly did want to be a one-two punch with Kobe. He was saying it as far back as 1998. Throughout the history of basketball, every great team <clears throat> always had a one-two punch. Isaiah and Lambert, Magic and Kareem, Bird and McHale. And I think uh, myself and Kobe Bryant will uh, uh, become our one-two punch. The problem lay with the fact that Kobe could not accept being younger brother to Shaq's older brother. Did Shaq have to constantly say that he was the older brother? Definitely not, especially if it bothered Kobe to the extent that it did. However, on his side, Kobe acted like this. He was a headstrong loner whose showboating style hurt the team and cost them key victories. That's the part that you know, probably a lot of us question. Kobe changed alone in a cubicle off the locker room and rarely spoke to his teammates off the court. There's no question that he's not really interested in the quote unquote personal part of being in the NBA. Kobe didn't go to his teammates parties. He barely talked to them. He refused to be friends with them. He was not yet the Kobe we all loved by the end of his career who had learned the balance of individual talent and teamwork. This was the Kobe who outworked everyone and because of this, along with the massive chip on his shoulder, wanted to be left alone and also felt he should be treated differently. Kobe never considered Shaq even a friend during his time together with him. During the Shaq years, were you guys friends? 
No. This Kobe versus the world mentality was obviously extreme at times and it never ended. It was what made Kobe great as a player, but with his relationship with Shaq, it can be argued that it was certainly detrimental. Even after he'd retired, Kobe still admitted he enjoyed having more rings than Shaq. But you also said you, you took so much joy in having the five championships and he only the four. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a little competitive. We all do love Kobe's competitiveness, but would LeBron say the same thing about Dwayne Wade? Would he say he enjoyed having more rings than Wade? Shaq, meanwhile, post-retirement, has stayed strong and true to his brotherhood belief. My cousin lived with me. We argue and fight all the time. But the thing that kept us going was the respect. When I get double teamed, you know I'm looking for him. When he get double teamed by the ring, he looking for me. After my first championship, when I go like this, it's a million motherfuckers in the arena. Who jumps in my arms first? Say what you want about Shaq, the media lied about it. They pulled the classic, we're only going to focus on the negative. They never focused on the fact that at the end of the day, Prime Shaquille O'Neal was not only unstoppable, but he was a winner. However, Shaq also did do things like slap Kobe in the face in 1999, as well as openly call him out as being selfish in team meetings behind doors. Really, at the end of the day, with both Shaq and Kobe, you just had two different mindsets on what it took to win. Kobe Kobe thought you needed to work as hard as possible and would not accept anything other than that. Shaq certainly did not feel that way, and they both could have left it at that, but for whatever reason, this difference of mindset caused them all the problems in the world. It is something like this that explains why Kobe and Shaq eventually split apart. However, we still do not have a great reason as to why in 2004, Kobe was on the brink of leaving the Lakers as well. We were looking for homes. Right. We were actually looking for homes in Chicago researching schools, um, places to live. So that was true, you were gonna go to the Bulls? Yeah. As again, this story goes deeper and deeper and the final lie that broke apart the Kobe and Shaq Lakers was not told by anyone even involved in the NBA. It was told by police officer Doug Winters during Kobe Bryant's infamous court case that took place during the 2004 season. As during the investigation into the case, Detective Doug Winters lied to Kobe Bryant or deceived him in order to get him to keep talking. And what Kobe said would cause Shaq to physically attempt to fight him. I'm taking you into that police investigation room right now, and Detective Winters and Loya are interviewing Kobe for 75 minutes, and they tell him that the tape recorder is now off. Up until this point, the two have obviously been very nice. They've been doing things such as offering to help him with his crutches. After 75 minutes, Winters turns off the tape recorder, telling Kobe the interview is now over. Kobe takes this to mean that he is now off the record, which is not the case, which meant Kobe felt comfortable sharing and Doug Winters felt comfortable exposing after clear what some might call trickery quote Bryant made a comment to us about what another teammate does in situations like these Bryant stated that he should have done what Shaq does Bryant stated that Shaq would pay his women not to say anything he stated Shaq has paid up to a million dollars already for situations like this he stated he Bryant treats a woman with respect therefore they shouldn't say anything. This statement made waves with both the media and the Lakers as a team. Shaq was a married man who has since expressed deep apologies for his own actions. But with these words, Kobe had broken the code. You do not speak about your teammates in that way. On his end, Kobe felt the police lied to him. On Shaq's end, he felt Kobe was snitching on him to the police. Following the statement, there were rumors or reports that Shaq tried to fight or we'll just say assault because he would have taken down. Kobe after these statements, but his teammates were able to hold him back. The craziest part is the dysfunction did not stop there. Karl Malone took this opportunity to try and hit on Kobe's wife as she herself was dealing with Kobe's court case and all of this news. It's hard for me to remember a fall from grace that is greater than yours. Did Karl Malone make a pass at your wife? You know what? Uh, I, I know what took place. Other than that, it's just water under the bridge. I'm a grown man. Kobe and I, we just go in the back with no cameras, no nothing, and let's just knuckle up and get it over with. Carl Malone, you are the worst, and is it possible that an older Hall of Fame teammate openly hitting on your wife as you're going through clearly the worst time of both your marriage and life might have caused some on-court chemistry problems for you and your team? Yes, the answer is yes. When you add Kobe's court case, along with the personal comments that leaked about Shaq, as well as Carl Malone hitting on his wife Vanessa. The 2004 Lakers 
Rams. Lived up to their LA billing in every way, but blew apart quite predictably. So at the end of the day, if you do play the what if game, you can certainly say that the Lakers could have won more titles. They could have had the first four peat since the NBA had nine teams. However, it is very possible that there was just too much ego here at this point in time that both Kobe and Shaq at this point in their lives were just not able to make it happen. Let me know and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.